to Swansea, thank goodness. I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane. For I bring good news. Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. In the meantime, find a... Good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. Oh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor? Dr. Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King and Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. We're very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent, and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. <sighs> Here at Pembroke, it's not what we have, but what we haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, just ask her. Duly noted. Thank you. Your assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Welcome aboard, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my rounds. You're coming, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. Huh. Interessante, interessante. Ah, essa aqui é a roupa que a gente vê nos trailers e tudo mais, né? Então, analise o sangue de William Bishop no hospital. Minha missão, né? Estado Hospital Pembroke. Está todo mundo estável, né? Está tudo normal. Então, tá susto. Tem gente brigando. Ô, oh, louco, o cara simplesmente foi lá e matou. You bastard! I won't bite! Sir, please! You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass! Uh... Seja mais educado. Insulting a good Samaritan. Not exactly the way to get rescued. All right, all right, sorry. I am in pain here. My guts are spilling out onto the street and you're yabbering on. Yes. That's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. Qualidade do sangue, né? Então ele tem quentinho, né? A qualidade do sangue indica quanta XP você receberá. De um cidadão em particular. Quanto maior a qualidade do sangue, mais experiência você recebe. Enfeitiçar. Para beber o sangue de sua presa, primeiro você precisa enfeitiçá-la e atraí-la para um local afastado de outras pessoas. Seu nível de enfeitiçar deve ser igual ou superior à resistência do cidadão. Aperte Q para enfeitiçar Clay. Raço vermelho para conduzir as para as sombras. Que raço vermelho? Isso aqui? Não vendo muito rastro vermelho não. Ah, tô vendo alguma coisa aqui? Ali aqui ó. Eles vão sangue aperte para abraçar, Clay Cox. Bate espaço para liberar. Ah. Mas esteja ciente que haverá consequências. Soltar ele. Até porque ele vale 500. Não mais. Não hoje. Não como assim. Eu não vou tomar outra vida. Não vai ser assim. Vamos deixar o Clay Cox aí. É importante para o Huntsman, às vezes, deixar a sua prey ir. But no famished hunter can run for long. Certo, galera. Gostaria de saber a opinião de vocês. Uh, se vocês gostariam de ver uma run mais 
uh, do mal, que provavelmente eu tô sentindo aqui que pode dar um final ruim. Ou fazer uma run mais do bem, né? E tentar ser um caçador de vampiros vampírico e não matar muita gente, né? O mínimo possível, ou não matar ninguém. Ou fazer um meio termo, né? Ah, tá, tá precisando, bebe, a oportunidade tá boa, né? O pessoal dá muita XP, aí até bebe. Se for um carinha tipo um Zé ali que vale 500, é... Deixa quieto. Diga aí embaixo nos comentários. Ela serve pra isso. E um nome impressionante aí. Compartilhar e chamar a galera aí pra curtir, pra acompanhar a série. Que é ela que dá vida, né? Ah, um acompanhamento que dá vida pra séries. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter Milton to bring him back immediately. Thank you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. Vamos ver sobre ela. Claro, ela vale bastante. O social ninguém sabe, pista ninguém sabe. Uma coisa que eu acho que é importante, né, a gente investigar esse círculo e tudo mais para saber mais sobre as possíveis vítimas, né, se for caçar elas e tudo mais. Saúde, né? Hum, será que isso aqui é porque eu não estou bebendo sangue? Aí eu tô grave, aí eu posso ficar crítico, aí eu posso virar uma pessoa hostil que ataca todo mundo? Pode ser que seja alguma coisa assim, hein? Bom, uh, se a gente não fizer uma investigação séria, pode ser que a gente, sei lá, ataque alguém que, que deixe pistas pra ser descoberto. Não sei, faz sentido. Eu like Como está o Sr. Hampton? E o Sr. Hampton, o paciente que nos trouxe. Como ele faz? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. Hmm. What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. Ele me conhece mais que eu conheço ele. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough and better than me. O administrador tem melhores coisas para fazer do que mix com nós. E. Ok. Vamos perguntar isso aqui. Apologies, eu só o conheci uma vez. Isso é sudden. Eu só o retornei para a Inglaterra. O Dr. Swansea é um brilhante surgeon e o mais compassionado físico. Aparentemente, ele é bem visto. É, pelo, pelos funcionários, né? Você pode me direção da minha room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Beleza. Será que vai ser tipo um local de descanso com uma cama? Good evening, sir. Importante conhecer as pessoas nesse jogo, hein? I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Hum. Bom, bom. Primeiro comerciante aqui, hein? Pressione R. Tá, enfeitiçar não dá. Pressione para mais informações. R. O que, que é isso aqui? Ah, tá. Eu não vou matar o cara que vende arma, né? How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything, and it's getting worse every day. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know, and by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. Concordo com esse cara. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? 
Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... too long, I guess. I bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. Hmm. That's, that's something since that's you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing here. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital? That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Hum, dá uma investigação, hein? Interessante, interessante. Tá vendo, pessoal? Como é importante falar com os caras. Ah, sua vida em Londres, perguntas pessoais. Requer pistas, né? Tá. Vamos negociar. Eu gostaria de ver os seus bens. Uma escolha, Dr. Reed. Um arma reliável é o que todos precisam hoje em dia. Certo. Espingarda do Milton. 300 e pouco. Quanto que eu tenho? Tem 36, tá bom. Comprar. Aí tem uns, né, uns negócios para fazer upgrade. Tá bom. Tá bom. E vender. Armas eu não posso vender, né? Tem esses negócios aqui. Palas e. O que é isso aqui? Entulho. Garrafa de álcool. Normal de revenda. Bom valor de revenda, relógio. Interessante. Beleza. Então isso é loot mesmo, né? É só pra, pra vender. Olhada. É, realmente não é um jogo assim, tipo Kingdom Come, onde você pode simplesmente deitar e dormir em qualquer lugar, né? Porque tem a questão ali do sol. Então, se eu durmo aqui e amanhece, e aí, como é que eu faço? Então, é verdade. O famoso Dr. Reed tem nos unido. Eu não posso pensar de nenhuma melhor notícia durante esses tempos terríveis. Nós conhecemos os outros? Na verdade, sim. Nós nos conhecemos uma vez antes, na Universidade Rockefeller de Rockefeller, em New York. Dr. Tippett, sim, eu me lembro. Eu estava assistindo o professor Carell em sua pesquisa sobre os bypasses coronarianos. Ele não tinha nada mais para você. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. Hmm. Perguntas pessoais, né? Vai precisar de pistas. Entendi. E vidas. Como estão as coisas aqui, ó. Requer uma pista aqui. Uau! What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. As pessoas são mais importantes. Da mesma. Não tive muita escolha. Não, tudo igual. It's not exactly the best situation in London either. I can't have expected this hospital to be prepared for what was to come. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Uh, Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah, yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Tell me more about cherished people then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. Hmm. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Os pessoais, a pergunta dela? Não. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. 
Certo, agora a gente conhece né, mais uma pessoa, né, mais um possível alvo. E se ela é uma boa pessoa, será que pessoas boas valem mais? E pessoas ruins, né, que nem aquele cara lá que matou o outro lá na, no beco, valia, vale menos? Porque ele valia 500. Isso pode ser isso. Hum, mais um médico. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swanson's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. É, cara legal. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame, or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Uh, hmm. Conhecimento importante. Knowledge has always been and will remain our main weapon, and it has always come at a price, and personal initiative. It is not a question of initiative; it is a question of integrity. These men and women have put their faith in us, Doctor Reed. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Aykroyd. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Hmm. Fique esperto. You are going to change your tone with me, my dear colleague, and very quickly. I don't think so. Perhaps you think yourself protected by Dr. Swansea, but I am still a free man, and I will speak to you the way I want. Hum. Ah, o, cara, o cara é um é um bom candidato a, a, a virar lanche, viu? This hospital is longer than mine. Perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Hmm, no pista disponível. Ah, uh, tá beira, vamos ver, tá beira. Desaprova os métodos da medicina moderna. Então isso aqui já deve né, ter fortalecido o sangue dele. Círculo social, né? Tem acho que duas pessoas no círculo dele. E mais algumas pistas ali que a gente ainda não encheu. Eu acho que é só isso. Obrigado pelo seu tempo. Vamos falar mais tarde. Interessante, interessante. Muito interessante. Encontre seu escritório no segundo andar. Entre no jardim do quintal, né? Meia-noite. Nossa, cara, tem muita gente, cara. Tem muita, muita gente nesse jogo. Uh, algo brilhou. Cascos de vidro. Tem pacientes. Possivelmente daria pra atacar pacientes. Vamos dar uma faladinha aqui rapidão. Boa noite, senhor. Ah, isso aqui vai... Posso te ajudar? Não sei se uma terceira opinião é necessária. Seus colegas já estão discutindo sobre a minha condição. Eu sei. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get my bloody arm fixed properly. 
Ah, galera, isso vai levar algum tempinho, né? Eu vou conhecer o pessoal do hospital, então já avisando. Se o pessoal quiser dar uma avançada no vídeo pra ver o que acontece mais pra frente. Ou, ou se o pessoal quiser, né, assistir e entender um pouco mais sobre a história, saber quem é quem, quem pode ser um alvo interessante, certo? Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable, and your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Hmm. Goodbye. Ele tá com problema no braço aí. Eu acho que a gente falaria com os médicos dele. Nossa, os caras estão falando aqui. Ah, e isso liberaria algumas pistas, alguma coisa. Ah, já falei com ela. Peraí, já falei com ela? Já falei com ela. Thank you, Nurse. Uh, a gente liberaria acho que umas pistas aí para perguntar para ele talvez sobre o braço né, que tá acontecendo que ele acha. I believe we're going to be working together, Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune, such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland, Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Hmm. Okay, prazer. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. Hey. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. Certo. Uh, a versão de Ackroyd dos... What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Aykroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy? Dr. Aykroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Hmm. Harvey e o Aykroyd é aquele cara que eu falei, né? É. Tá. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Uh, precisa da minha ajuda? Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research. 
Yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Certo. Goodbye. Opa. Tem perguntas pessoais. Good evening, Dom. Good evening. Onde é que ele entrou usando sangue? Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Uh, conta sobre a Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Olha, interessante. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Interessante, vamos ver qual é esse caso aí do, do, do carinha. Vem cá, meu amigo, qual é a sua história? Pontos pessoais. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. Foi de propósito? You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick, unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself, but I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, doctor. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Hmm. Yeah, é foda. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. Thanks. <sighs> I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children after losing their mother? They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Entendi. Alguma coisa aqui? Não, né? Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. É. Então, vamos ver se eu consigo falar alguma coisa com ele né, depois de pegar as dicas. Tell me, Waverly. What do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. 
I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. Ele não parece mais jovem do que todos os outros. Estranho. Uh, por quê? Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Hum, não posso ver como assim. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Se eu ver aqui, deixa eu ver. Não, ele, ó, era uma escolha só. Quando aparece o Y, eu acho que é uma escolha só, né? Tem que escolher uma vez, entendi. Yeah. Entendi. E aí, eu tenho como falar, ó, opera. Apesar de que, se o cara tá falando que o procedimento é provado, faz mais sentido, não. Não. I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Hmm. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, doctor. I'll let you get some rest, then. Waste your time with me. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer, and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Hmm. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. Oh, loco, bro! She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. Hmm. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. É estranho. Bem estranho. E aí, pessoal, não tem nada. Beleza. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Então vamos ver se a gente consegue já coisar aqui, né? Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Certo. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, doctor. Faz sentido. Sobre a sua internação. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. 
She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. His name was Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured, you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, Doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. Eat. How painful. So painful, I'd rather. Uh, I'm sure you realize a doc. Not really. I... Yes, maybe. Ele não quer falar. Não quer falar mesmo, mesmo. I have to go. Certo. Bom, ainda tem que, né, descansar para evoluir. E o pessoal tá aqui. Eu acho que eu não vou resolver muita coisa ainda. Que é o. Ah, ali, ó, dá para ver pelo, né, por pontos. Por exemplo, esse aqui vale 800. A mãe vale. Nossa, ele tá mal, né? Fadiga. O que ele vale? 350 vale nada. 2.600. 2.000. Tinha uns carinhas lá que valia 6.000, né, no comecinho. Era muita, muita coisa. Dá uma olhada se... Tinha que subir uma escada, era isso? Quem que é esse cara? Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague. Are you a doctor too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Chadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Chadana, pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean, you used to be a doctor? Was your license revoked? No, sir. It is just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. Hmm. Are you afraid or uneasy being surrounded by so many corpses? Why should I? These bodies are empty vessels. Flesh left to decay. Poof. No soul anymore. All gone. An interesting point of view. And quite an exotic one, too. Most people fear or at least have a respect for dead flesh. Sir, as a medic during the war, I learned to face my death and the death of others. It's the pain we have to tame, not death itself. How did you get this job? After I left the army, I worked as an undertaker down by the docks. A dangerous place with many an unpleasant business there. Milton Hooks helped me get a job here. Do you work here alone? Yes, very easy work, sir. All I have to do is watch a few bodies. The situation was very different when the main morgue was still open. Why do you have to watch these bodies? Because these poor fellows have no names. We keep them in case someone comes looking for the missing. Sadly, very rarely happens. Why close the hospital's main morgue? It was for sanitary reasons after the beginning of the epidemic. Cadavers had to be moved to the nearest mass grave. Huh. Have we met before? I don't think so, sir. Why? When we first talked, you said you were glad to meet me since I was reported dead. Funny story, sir. Your sister came here Woo. a few nights ago. You were missing, and she was looking for your body. She must be very relieved now. Tristeza. A pawnbroker. I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. Imagino que ele deve estar tá roubando dos mortos. Talvez. Who comes here to trade with you? It's very unhygienic, even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers, for the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember? And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. What kind of goods? With the quarantine, it's not always easy to buy things. 
So I trade. I exchange. Some people sell. Some others buy. I like to help. Since you're not afraid of dying, do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive. For our time is short, and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality as a concept? I don't think so. Don't mistake me. I love life, and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, sir. Even goodwill. So you're ready to die? No, I am not. I don't fear death, for I won't see it. What troubles me is the pain my death will inflict to those I know. You're a wise man, Mr. Chidana. No, Dr. Reed. I am a foolish man. But I like to think otherwise. Do you really believe goodwill cannot last? As I said, sir, everything decays. If I was to never die, goodness, I would be bored or worse. And I like to be helpful, sir. Quite depressing, wouldn't you say? Yes. But the good news is, we'll all die before losing our humanity, sir. Nem todos. Nem todos. Vamos ver o que ele tem aí. Ah, ele vende ópio? Ah, tá, né? Bom, na época não era, acho que, proibido. Não sei exatamente nessa data. Ó. Oh. Certo. Codeína. Será que é tipo cocaína ou não? Usado para né, aliviar a tosse. E uma fórmula enigmática. Hum. Vender. Aparentemente não tem nada, né? Interessante, interessante. Uma coisa, uma pinha aqui. Ó, tem comerciante, comerciante. Meia noite, noite no Jardim do Bem e do Mal. Entrar no Jardim do Quintal, né? Certo. Então ali é uma missão que a gente pode fazer. Deixa eu ver se tem Journal. Temos... Então, principal... Tá. Aqui nós temos né, as pessoas, então... Ne... Ah, são vários lugares, né? Então aqui é o hospital. Na real, eu conheço a maior parte das pessoas que estão no hospital, né? Tem aqui quatro que eu não... Encontrei ainda. Uh, estado de saúde. Ah, estado de saúde não. É do local mesmo, pessoal. Então, ó, tá saudável. Tá bem. Tá bem. Pilar, que isso? Pilar é tipo... É o boss aí, é o cara que manda. Será que é isso? Vale 6 mil? Tá vendo coisa. Bom. Pilar né, do hospital. Ah, você vale 6 mil. Entendi. Ó, tá doente, né? Tá com fadiga. Esse aqui, ó. Vale bastante. Vale até um pouco mais. Eu acho que é porque eu devo ter uma pista a mais, né? Tem... Eu não conheço ela, na real. Mas foi a que pegou o suborno, não foi? Putz. Agora é difícil saber qual das duas. Certo. E... Deixa eu ver. Porque é uma das pacientes que eu ainda não vi, né? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon. What are you looking for, mortal? My clemency. Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Uh, eu acho que não. Pergunta assim, ó, vale mil.
And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard Syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. Ah, coitada. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howcroft? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Seus inimigos. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Deixa ela aí. O oh, alvo errado. Nova investigação. Hum, interessante. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. That was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Don't tá, né? I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. This here is the entrance. Mais um paciente. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face, no. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. I'll go first for that. do anything for your pain. Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Hmm. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. How close are you to Miss Horcroft? 
Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. Her arm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. Eita. Não tem problemas. Eu realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Cotar syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the real one. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of my blood. And the pain, it's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, doctor. Eita. Então tá, né? Deixa os pombinhos aí. Bye for now, Mr. Elwood. Eu ganho eu também lá em cima, eu vou ganhando experiência. Conforme eu vou conhecendo. Mais sobre as pessoas. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here, this Miss Hawcroft. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers Trade Union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show. With the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know? The sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint. Not even criminals. Huh. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Who should I avoid in this part of town then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. Huh. E? Goodbye, Mr. Hey, there's people's pessoas. Hello again. Hello. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. And I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Hmm. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really. But I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That 
poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke? Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Yay, Mr. Hampton. Uh, I cannot enter. Don't pull sink there. Então nós temos o quê? Talvez o jardim e tal. Melhor não mexer com isso agora, porque eu acho que pode dar treta, ficar preso numa, numa quest, né? O negócio já tá longo pra caramba, a gente tá aqui investigando todo mundo. Pera aí, a minha sala... Nossa, cara. Até encontrar agora a minha sala. A 20 metros. Era a última, não era? This must be the place. Ah, me escondido. Relegated to the shadows, a kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. Artigo sobre Econs. Cidade sobrenatural. Vampiros podem agir, se movimentar como um mortal nas ações. Hum. Oh, caramba. Voltou errado. Ah, aqui agora eu posso descer. Mesmerização, né? A gente pode meio que fazer um controle mental. Consciência sobre sangue. Habilidade mais catastrófica. Assim, por sangue. Tanto sangue para funcionar. Ah, o vampiro faminto pode ficar muito enfraquecido, mesmo que não possa morrer de fome ou sede. Toda essa vontade, essa necessidade de sangue, explica o motivo dos vampiros serem tão atraídos por ele. O vampiro me confessou que às vezes ah, sangue pode cegá-lo. Já que o cheiro e a atratividade dele são tão fortes. Quando o vampiro foca, ele quase consegue ver sangue ao seu redor. Dentro dos corpos quentes, através das paredes e tudo mais. Se isso for verdade, então pode ter várias aplicações médicas. É verdade, né? Verdade. Aplicações médicas podem existir. Mata dragões. Arma branca. Será que é uma espada mesmo? Espadão? Uma espada antiga, rapaz. Caraca, que da hora! <risos> ah, só falta descobrir como que eu equipo. Mas. Caraca, que da hora! Pela merda. Então, cara, faca usada. Tá tudo usado, na real. Branca nível 1, tá tudo, tudo usado. O que aconteceu? What the hell? What the hell? Mensagem do Dr. Swanser. Ah, pediu enferma... enfermeira. Escritório. Tá, só tá falando aí que eu tenho um escritório. Beleza. Talvez essa aqui seja a minha nova roupa, é isso? Trascos de vrido. E aqui é... Fabricação, medicamento. Uma bancada você pode fabricar tratamentos médicos para curar cidadãos doentes. Olha só. Soro para aprimorar a si mesmo. E melhoria de armas. Primeiro você precisa analisar os componentes que encontrou para desbloquear novas receitas. Clique em analisar. Tratamento para anemia, sepsi e fadiga. Ah, então, né, o, do, a doença dos caras. Vidro, quinina, tártaro, solução. Ah, é a mesma coisa aqui, ó, tá vendo? Só uma quinina a mais. Caramba, é tudo feito da mesma coisa. 
Então tá, né? Então tá. E a amostra do sangue aqui. Analisar. Fez o soro. Soro regenerativo fraco. Recupera instantaneamente 300 de vida. Depois mais 150 de vida. Precisa de um frasco, uma amostra de sangue robusto, aguado. E tartarato ferroso e solução. Tartarato ferroso. Solução de ir pro... É a mesma coisa que usa pra tudo, pelo visto. Mesma coisa pra todas as coisas. Certo? Melhoria aqui, por exemplo. Preciso de componente comum ali. Para isso. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. Tá, então... The sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. Então, vamos continuar amanhã à noite. Certo. Então temos magias agressivas, defensivas, barreira de sangue, por exemplo. Parece ser legal, hein? Tração de segundo, que é uma barreira invisível que absorve dano direto até se dissipar ou ser destruída ou coagulação. Bloqueia o sangue do alvo nas veias e o deixa indefeso. Ah, tipo, será que é pra stunar? Pode ser, pode ser. Pode ser. Mordida aqui, né? Ela dá mais dano. Deixa eu dar uma olhada aqui embaixo. Da forte, simplesmente vai aumentando o dano. É, dá pra virar um mordiscator máximo aqui, hein? Isso aqui, geração rápida. É um mordiscator rápido que vai mordendo e enchendo a vida ao mesmo tempo. Pode ser uma build interessante. Forma sangue. Absorção. Tá, e tem né, os negócios interessantes aqui, por exemplo, a garra. Começar a encher... Se usar as garras, vai começar a enxergar os humanos de um jeito diferente, com uma poça de carne macia e suculenta. É, é, parece ser legal. Mas é muito caro. É muito, muito caro. Deixa eu dar uma olhada. Na real, eu vou guardar os meus pontos e eu vou tentar pegar mil para pegar as garras ou algo do tipo. Se você gostou desse vídeo e gostaria de ajudar o crescimento do canal, compartilhe com seus amigos. Links na descrição. Por enquanto é só. Valeu e falou.